Mr. Chairman, uh, just remember to please pick up the handouts. Uh, dog walk will be 945 early, 945 this week. And uh, remember, uh, no live stream. Thank you. Yep. All right, well, it's on to uh, South Carolina, um, who I've been very impressed with, and um, I think they're playing uh, uh, a lot better. They've gotten better throughout the year. You can tell from game one to game two, and um, they're healthier, number one. They've got uh, a, a lot of guys uh, playing at a high level. Um, got a lot of respect for the way Will runs the program. Um, I think they're doing a really good job, both coordinators. Um, really get after you. They put pressure on you in three phases, offense, defense, and special teams. Um, they do a uh, <clears throat> great job up front defensively. They got a lot of big guys and more big bodies than they've had uh, in the past, and they're healthy. Uh, and then offensively, they've got one of the best wide receivers that, that I've seen on tape in Brian Edwards. He does a great job. Uh, Helensky is a very talented quarterback. We recruited him hard here. He's got extreme arm talent. Um, he can make all the throws, um, and they're doing a lot of things that are uh, tough to defend uh, offensively, and they put pressure on you from a special team standpoint. So it's been an exciting game. I want to challenge our fans who have always responded to challenges to get in your seats early and get ready for an early kickoff. Uh, our guys will need that support, and we'll need the uh, crowd noise and the impact we had in the Notre Dame game. We'll need that same thing uh, going against a young quarterback. With that, I'll open it up. Kirby, after the game the other night, Jake talked about, you know, some teams just like to light up the scoreboard and all that. And, and there are some teams at the top of the country that do seem to have, like, pinball machine offenses. Um, you're coming off a very efficient game as far as yards per play and time of possession and all that stuff. But are you happy with the offense, or, or is there a lack of, of big play uh, potential compared to some other offenses out there? Um. Am I happy with the offense? Yeah, I'm, I'm happy with what we've been able to do, to do sustain, sustain drives. Do we want to be more explosive? Yes, we want to be more explosive. I think we're always looking. We have a goal of one of every eight plays to be explosive. Our, in this game, we were one, point, one out of 8.3. So we missed our goal offensively of being explosive. That's our standard. That's not, you know, some teams may have, they want every, one every five, but we want one out of every eight plays is our goal. And we were one of 8.3. So we just missed it and weren't. And some of that, you know, they did a good job of. And you, you take one or two blocks downfield and one more play is explosive and you make that goal. But uh, we're always looking to improve. And the same thing with defense, we're trying to uh, not give up explosives. You know, I, settling down, I think, uh, playing uh, and understanding what the team's trying to do to us. Maybe we've got to do a better job as coaches of preparing them early in the game. Um, you know, I think when you're a good defense, I do think that you don't see the same things. So what happens is, in the history of the really good defense that I've been with, you go into a game expecting one thing, and the, the other team has worked really hard to try to counteract that. and get off tendencies to do different things. You see different stuff because they're trying to uh, generate plays against you. And um, that's been the case for us. But we got to do a better job uh, starting off for sure. Coach, uh, Will Muschamp was asked yesterday about his friendship with you. Could you just elaborate on, on Will's role when you were here and how you guys have been able to maintain a friendship throughout the changes in your coaching careers? Yeah, th there was it was not like a close relationship when we were here because he was a fifth year senior captain and I was a red shirt freshman that we were really in two different places. So, uh, I mean, he was good to me, but it wasn't like we had a friendship. We we're in two different spots in our career. Where we became closer was the opportunity he gave me to come to Valdosta State, he and Chris Atcher, and we worked together there, and then we worked together at uh, at LSU, and those two. Uh, years we spent in the same staff, we probably bonded more than we did while we were here. But um, he's always been a very intense uh, coach, good football coach. I think he does a good job running the program. And uh, that has allowed us to share information when possible, when it's not about scheme and it's more about philosophy. Um, but he has been a good friend. I got a lot of respect for him. wonder about him 
from a downfield, but not seeing the all 22, is it, are, are those shots not there a lot? Or you lost when you said not seeing the all 22? The all 22, the, the tape. I, we don't oh, see I got that. you. The, yeah. the whole, yeah. whole picture. What, what is the, the whole picture there? Is he, are the safeties, the quarters just taking away the deep shots and he's just very adept at hitting the balls that are there? No. I mean, he's taking some shots and we've hit some. I mean, we, we take shots in practice. We have He has progressions that he reads and he goes through his progressions and he looks for the right uh, throws. But um, I, I, I don't know that it's all about – being explosive is a lot of things. It's blocking downfield. It's uh, winning one-on-ones. It's speed, vertical speed versus horizontal speed. There's a lot of things combined in that. I mean, you look at the, the – just look at us defensively in reverse and say, okay, what have we given up explosive? Well – Two of our explosives are, are busts. One was against um, a team that came in. You know, we gave up the play early in uh, against, uh, was it Murray, I think it was, or was Arkansas State as Murray. So we give up a, a, a big play in that game off of a bust and then give up a really big explosive last week, again, off of a bust. So some of that is mistakes where he's going to capitalize on those errors if he gets those opportunities. But we haven't had a lot of busts in coverage where they left a guy free or somebody just messed up. And uh, George, you know, had an explosive where he won one-on-one -on -one outside. And I think that those are the ways you get an opportunity to get those explosives down the field. But it's not a matter of him not reading it correctly or us not calling it because a lot of times the progression is deep to short or short to deep or across the board. And he does a good job of, uh, of, of finding the right guy with the ball. Kirby, what do you remember about coaching Thomas Brown as a player? And what was that season like? for you to coach on the offensive side of the ball in 2005? Um, Thomas was one of the hardest working players we had in that room. I had a really good room of, ba of running backs. There were four or five really good backs, Craig Lumpkin, Danny Ware, Tyson Browning, Thomas Brown. There was good backs in that room. And he was uh, probably the hardest working, quietest guy uh, that came to work every day, extremely physical and explosive uh, for his size. And um, he's just a great leader. Great person, um, and he he continues to be that way as a coach. Um, what was the second part? So, you've been obviously a defensive yeah. That year on offense, <clears throat> well, I think coaching the, the coaching the running backs was more than just uh, effort. It was psychology. It was management. You know, you got four guys in the room that all want the ball, um, protection, um, protection of the ball, and protection of the quarterback. Uh, was an ultimate goal, but it was a good experience for me to see how offenses um, think about things. I think that was probably one of the most valuable years of my career because I looked at it through the eyes of an offensive staff, Callaway, Bobo, and Coach Rick, of how they analyze the defense and how they see things. Um, Coach, do you have an update on uh, Jordan Davis, how you guys might manage his practice workload this week? And also, um, after he – left the game early Saturday after watching the tape. What type of things are you able to see about the impact he has on the defensive line when he's, you know, like how much of a difference do you see when he's not out there? Um, I'll be honest, I didn't see a huge difference when he wasn't out there because there was, I mean, the things he impacts are the run game and we were able to control the run game uh, pretty well. I mean, the play was in there. We actually had a, a run come out, so um, we didn't, play a run right early in the game when he was in there. And we play, we fit him a lot more right as the game went on. Um, we think uh, Jordan's going to be fine. He's not going to be out there today. Early on, he's going to be rehabbing uh, when you guys are out there. But we think he's going to be fine to go. So we expect him to play. <coughs> now through five games, where have you seen Brian Harrington improve the most from where he was in the offseason to where he is now? I think the confidence. I mean, uh, Brian, I don't know that it's major improvement. Uh, the Brian I'm seeing now is the Brian that I've always seen. The difference is you guys are seeing him. And you, you say, why didn't he play? Well, there's guys in the NFL, the reason why he didn't play. I mean, Brian has been perfectly capable. And when he got his opportunity, I mean, he seized his opportunity the times he got those opportunities in the past. He's just getting more opportunity now. I think his uh, vision, his decision making, uh, he catches the ball well out of the backfield. He runs really hard. I mean, he runs physical and explosive. And to be honest with you, he practices that way. So when he goes out to practice, he, he doesn't treat uh, practice different than a game. And uh, I think those practice habits have allowed him to be successful in games. It's just you guys are getting able to see it now. Uh, to follow up on that, you talked about the um, 
of the continued emergence of debt that running back and, and including with Samir White not getting a chance? Yeah, uh, I don't see it as an emergence. I see it as it's kind of been there. I mean, you say what's the deepest position on our team? You would probably argue that that, that that running back is the you know the, the deepest position, and um, those guys compete really hard in practice. They work for their reps. Um, we thought Zamir had some really good work uh, last week. He's his protections have just become he's really physical in his protections. He's one of our best pass protectors. So he's earned that right and that trust to get out there and um, we're pleased with his growth and it's added more depth and I mean, he started on punt return this game and he did more things in this game than he's done in the past. So with him, I mean Kenny is showing up more and more on special teams for us. He's figured out that that's an opportunity for him to gain trust and uh, he's done that. So those guys are working really hard. Kirby, you're going from one facing one true freshman quarterback to another, and I know you had true freshmen in 16 and 17 here starting for you, but and I think Alabama, five of their eight games could be against true freshman quarterbacks in the <laughs> SEC. Are you surprised by that number? And, and is there, it seems like you don't want quarterbacks to lose the game and that you need them to be game managers early on. When you get to the midpoint of the season, and I know Mal was just making his first start last week, but when, when freshman quarterbacks get to the midpoint of the season, uh, do you feel more comfortable putting more stuff on them? Yeah, I think it's a trend that you're going to see because, number one, they're, they're getting hit more, so there's a chance of injury. They're running more, there's greater chance of injury. So you're seeing backups who happen to be true freshmen because quarterbacks don't usually stay the long haul and they, they leave. So you're seeing more backups. Um, but you're also seeing more talented freshmen arrive. And this young man is talented. This young man has a talented arm strength. He can make all the throws. To see him go in the games he went in, I mean, just, just look at the Alabama tape. He went out and played against one of the elite defenses in the country and, and spun the ball as good as anybody. He's got a great release. Uh, he's got intuition on throws, very instinctive. And he, he, he's going to be a really good player in this league for a long time, in my opinion. Uh, Tyson will be trying to go today. Um, we don't, I don't know much because I haven't seen him since um, the game or since we left for the game and he didn't go. So we're hoping to get him back, but we don't know. I'll, I'll know more by the end of the week. Um, and then Solomon should be good. He's cleared to go today. We thought if he had to go in the game, he would have been able to um, go. So he'll be practicing today. And uh, I don't think there's anything else outside of Jordan we talked about. I don't think there's anything else. Yeah, I mean Julian. Julian played uh, played well. He came in and he's been practicing. I mean, we we've been grooming him to get him ready and get him in the rotation, and felt like it was uh, it was the time to do it. So he'll get uh, he'll get opportunities to continue doing that if he continues to do everything he's supposed to do and uh, work hard in practice. He continues to do that. The biggest thing is we got to get some quickness and production out of those guys, and that's what we're hoping he can help with. Going back to Brian here, Ian, and um, you've known him so long, and he's a guy that's gone through a lot. <clears throat> and, and, you know, a time where people look for greener pastures out there when they're not playing a lot. Um, is, is that a, a guy you kind of pull for a little more when he has a successful game like he, he did the other day? I mean, I pull for all our guys. <laughs> the guys here that practice hard and go out and play, I, you want them to be successful just like you do anybody else. And he, he works hard. He's, he's – you can say he's been patient, but he's he's been a contributor in every way. I mean, the guy has played almost every role on every special teams. He's first in line when we do stuff for special teams. And uh, I've seen him carry the ball plenty in practices to know that he's talented enough. And uh, I don't think you look for greener pastures at Georgia. You, you, you continue to work and get better because the green pasture is what the O-line opens up. I mean, they open up green pastures for you to have ability to run. And you're not looking to run away from here and run away from a good physical O line where you get the opportunity to carry the ball. Looking at the numbers all defense has been able to shut down opposing running backs, you know, in the first five games. How would you assess the defensive line? Guys like Monty Rice and the line better stop stop the run. Um, you know, we haven't fit things real well all the time and we haven't tackled the way we're supposed to, especially in space. And um, some of that comes off passing game. But uh, we have to play better in space. We have to uh, be a better tackling team. And 
Um, that comes from perimeter runs from running backs. So, I mean, I'm not, not pleased with how we have uh, played as far as contact and contact toughness. We have to improve on that and get better because as a whole, when you watch football in general, tackling tends to go downhill as the season goes. And we can't let that happen. And um, a lot of that starts with our defensive line controlling it from getting out of there. When you go up against the coach of a former one like Josh Flores, our former defensive coordinator, how difficult is the game plan around what that coach already knows going into the game? Um, which game were you, were you talking about last week's? What were we talking about? Yes. Talking about Tennessee's with, with uh, Coach Chaney? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I'm worried about South Carolina right now, but I'm forgotten about that totally. I think that they did a they did a really good job. Um, got a lot of respect for those guys and, and how hard their kids played, but I'm worried about South Carolina right now. Uh, with Samir White, it looks like you guys got him involved early and pretty regularly throughout the game. How is he sort of handling the ins and outs of the season, both physically and sort of mentally, where you know there might be a week like Notre Dame where he doesn't get a carry and then he gets pretty involved against Tennessee? How is he handling that mentally? The Yeah, I, I mean, I think Zamir's physically – I mean, our kids lift, run, practice every day. I mean, there's more – there's probably more wear and tear in a Tuesday, Wednesday practice than there are sometimes in games. I think the psychological part of um, knowing and understanding what my role is in the game, and, and not every game's the same. I mean, you just don't know. So, that's part of being a good football player is I'm ready to go when my number's called. And I tell the guys all the time, because you prepare well in practice doesn't guarantee you'll play. But if you don't prepare well in practice, guarantees you won't. So that goes perfect for Zamir. He, he, he prepares properly and gets ready. Doesn't guarantee that he'll play. He, he deserves to, and I want him to, but doesn't guarantee he'll play. Um, but if he doesn't do those things, it'll guarantee you won't. And, and he's handled that well. He, he, he prepares and gets ready to play. And he prepared getting ready for Notre Dame just like he did for Tennessee. It wasn't different. It was, it was us making sure it happened and also uh, him being prepared to take advantage of the opportunity and, and practice in the right way so that we know he's ready. Coach, uh, South Carolina's coming off an off week, and you've got several opponents this year that are coming off of – off weeks. Uh, what do you make of that? Number one, I mean, I guess it's something that you have absolutely no control of. But what are some of the realities of it when a guy's when a team's got an extra week to prepare and you don't in particular? Well, the reality that you deal with. It's kind of like the kickoff time. I, I, you don't have control over it. You 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 take it and you go and you do the best job you can with it. Um, in a two off week year, I found that it seems like obviously there's more opportunities just statistically for that to happen. So when there's a two off week season, which there is this year, there's more that have that, that chance of happening. And you, you worry about it as a coach, but there's something you can't control. So when you can't control it, you, you know, you just move on and you say, look, hey, maybe we didn't start good defensively last week because we were off the week before. You know, sometimes there's there's some rust there and you um, playing a game sometimes is good for you. You get to grow and develop. I do think the healing part is helpful and getting fresher um, recovery time, those things are probably beneficial for the team that's off. But at the end of the day, I mean, you got to go out there and play the game, and uh, everybody's playing the same number of games. So, Coach, what are your thoughts about uh, promoting a player, or in your case, players for Heisman, and uh, when will that campaign hot rod for Heisman? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm ready to start it right now. I mean, Hot Rod does a great job. He does everything he's asked. He's a, a great leader on our team. He's very consistent. And uh, he has an approach to the game and an approach to his method of doing things that uh, is unique to him. And he believes in it. And um, we trust him a lot. And uh, he's, been a, he's been a tremendous leader, you know, just in this room with our team because people see how hard Rod works. So uh, it's an honor to have him on here, and he works really hard. Two more questions. Um, so in terms of players on your roster, whether it be why you're with them here or, or when they're high school prospects, I mean, how much are you able to learn about their their background, their motivations, their families, and, and then when they go out and have individual performances like some of these guys have week to week, I mean, do you ever look back on that and say, maybe remind the player of, like, this is maybe their their why, I suppose, of 
coming to Georgia performing like. Yeah, I think you know you 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 connect during recruiting, and you spend more time with the family during recruiting than you do with them just as a player. A lot of times, the toughest part about when they come here as a player, their families come for uh, you know team events in the spring, uh, team events in fall camp, uh, banquets and galas. A lot of times, the, the time you get to see the family, you don't always get to see them around a game time because we're so busy with recruiting or so busy with media or recruiting afterwards. So it's, it's hard to spend as much time as you want with them, but that connection that you form with their family, you know what made their son or daughter the way they are um, through everything they do. And uh, you see a lot of that with these kids, and you know the trials and tribulations they may have had at home, and you're so happy for them when they have success uh, on the field because they work so hard for it. But just as important to me is the development of the guy that's not having success right now, that's going through the, the hard time of growing pains, of I haven't quite been able to crack the line up, but I'm getting close. And the, the, those, those are the ones that, that stick, the Brian Harry and the guys that stick it out and they stay and they work, and then they, they're rewarded by their patience are the uh, great stories. Quick follow-up on, on Malinsky for South Carolina coach. How does, uh, uh, I guess, in the way he compares to Jake Bentley, maybe what he does better than Jake does? Well, it's hard because, you know, you, you, you see Jake in the first game, and we've played Jake a couple times. Um, you know, they're, they're a little different quarterbacks. I think, you know, Linsky has a really quick release. He's got the ability to get it out. He's got great velocity on his ball. He's uh, athletic and mobile enough to move in the pocket and get around and do some things. He just does not play like a freshman. And not that Bentley does, because Bentley's certainly not a freshman. But um, Alinsky's done a great job of, uh, of whipping the ball, throwing you know, quick game stuff, I mean, vertical down the field. He's got a really good group of wide outs, and they do a great job of putting him in successful situations. So he's made that transition really smooth.